This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best website builder for building your online brand. Hey everyone, so the One Piece live action cast was just announced and this has of course raised a bunch of polarizing opinions. Some people saying the casting is spot on perfect, some people saying it's absolutely terrible, they have no idea what they're doing, some people liking some actors but not others so much, and really this has brought back to the surface the general polarizing discussion that always surrounds the One Piece live action. Some people think that this is going to be amazing and possibly launch One Piece into sort of worldwide popularity and become a household name in countries that it wasn't previously. Whereas other people kind of have the mentality that look, Netflix and in general live action adaptations of anime series have consistently failed in the past. There's not been a single good one that anybody knows off the top of their head. So what I want to talk about today is just break down my opinions and you might be surprised to hear that I'm actually much more optimistic about the One Piece live action than a lot of people are because of a few things that I'm thinking about that just give me more hope than maybe the average person. So today I want to break down first of all my opinions on the One Piece live action cast, what type of adaptation this series actually seems like it is set to be, and finally three reasons that I am a bit more optimistic about this live action adaptation than most other fans are. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe. And I know that you all listen to me talk about One Piece all the time, and I bet a lot of you would love to start getting your thoughts out there which is why I'm recommending Squarespace, the sponsor for this video. If you've ever wanted to make a site, like the library of Ohara, for example, or even a simpler blog just to start getting your thoughts on One Piece or other works of fiction out there for other people, then that's honestly not that hard to do. Squarespace makes building a website extremely easy. It's actually the perfect tool for people with no web design experience, since all the website elements move around nice and symmetrically, and easily slot together to make for a polished professional look. It also makes it really simple to integrate videos or image galleries. So YouTube, Vimeo, Animoto, whatever you want to showcase on your site, it's all very straightforward to put together with Squarespace. You can get your free trial for Squarespace today by going to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, use squarespace.com slash Mr. Morge to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So with the casting, I think the first thing that people really need to understand is that just by looking at the actors, right, is not a good way to judge whether or not they're going to be giving good performances. So that's number one. I think many people are basing whether or not, you know, they got the casting right based on how close these actors look like what they're supposed to look like when that's just not what this should be judged on at all. I think that it is totally fine that, for example, Sanji's actor does not quite look like Sanji as long as, you know, first of all, makeup and cosmetics and everything like that exist. There's going to be full departments devoted to that. And second of all, the performance he gives is infinitely more important than whether or not he looks similar to the character, right? This is an adaptation. It's not supposed to be a one for one like, oh, we're looking at the real life version of Sanji right here. I would definitely agree that the only character that truly looks like they match their anime manga counterpart is Nami with Emily Rudd being, I think, a spot on impersonation of a live action Nami, right? But at the same time, that says nothing about whether the performance of Emily Rudd is going to be that much better than any of the other actors. So I think that the performances obviously matter more, but more importantly than that, in general, the cast does not matter as much in this scenario. I think the casting of this series is not by any means what's going to be what makes or breaks the One Piece live action adaptation. Because the reality is, if you look at all of the components that really make a live action series, right? The tone that is established, the effects that are used, the directorial style, the atmosphere, the progression of the plot, creating a believable world, making it all feel like it's one piece while at the same time not too cartoonish and still, you know, grounded in reality to a degree. Those are all much, much harder to get down and really nail than just having some people portray a character, right? The acting is not nearly as hard. You could probably find plenty of people to give a decently good acting portrayal of Zoro. That's not the hard part. Okay, the hard part is getting everything else that we know One Piece to be. All of the zaniness, the cartoonishness, etc. So I don't think the casting is really that make or break because the casting is really, the actors are not the biggest hurdle to making a series like One Piece come to life. The one exception I would say for this is Inaki Godoy, the main character, the actor for Luffy. The reason being, from what I've seen from the English dub of One Piece, it is very, very, very difficult to have a lot of Luffy's mannerisms translate over cleanly, even just to, I guess, American style or English style acting. 
and particularly as opposed to live acting. The reason being that Luffy as a character, you know, we like him because he's such an endearing figure, very carefree, naive, stupid, but in a lovable sort of way, and then in moments extremely uh, determined, resolute, strong-spirited, etc. right? So he has to play sort of a range. Now the tricky part with Luffy is that because he's a teenager, because he has this sort of airheaded quality to him, because he has a tendency to screw things up and annoy the other characters, it is very easy for Luffy, if not portrayed correctly, to essentially fall into this trap of just being a very annoying figure, a sort of one-dimensional stupid teenager that just goes around screwing things up, but then at the end of the day gets mad and beats up the bad guy and everyone is supposed to love him for it. That is sort of the vibe that you get when watching the English dub of the One Piece anime, and I know that many viewers do not like the portrayal of Luffy in the English dub for this reason, because it is very difficult to get Luffy in that sweet spot where he feels like a very endearing idiot who happens to have a much more fiery, or not fiery, but powerful spirit underneath that guise of stupidity that you might expect, versus just viewing him as, you know, a stupid teenager who keeps screwing things up and annoys people. So I think that Inaki Godoy has the hardest job out of all of these actors. If he can nail it, I think that the rest of the cast is going to be just fine. But as I said, I don't think the cast is make or break, and that's because what's going to matter more is how they bring the series feel as a whole to life. And this is what leads me to what type of adaptation I expect this series to be. Because I think when too many people are critical in assuming what the One Piece adaptation will be like in live action, I think a lot of what people are assuming is that this is going to be an attempt to recreate the One Piece world as closely and faithfully as possible in live action. And I think that that is destined to fail no matter how you try to do it, because the One Piece world is simply too goofy, too zany, too cartoonish to do something like that. And the amount of effects that you would need, the amount of large scale sets that you would need, it's just not feasible. I think what is more likely, instead of trying to expect a faithful adaptation, right? This is not just the same thing as adapting a manga to an anime. Instead of trying to expect a faithful adaptation, I think if you changed your expectations to more so this just being a take on One Piece, probably a much more grounded, realistic take on One Piece, a sort of encapsulation of many elements and carrying the same general storyline without actually trying to recreate the story, but rather a sort of twist or interpretation of that story, then I think a lot of people would be much more satisfied. And you can look at a lot of series that have been adapted like this, for example, The Walking Dead. If you actually look at the comic The Walking Dead, yes, it's much more stylized, much less realistic and grounded than what The Walking Dead TV show was, especially for the first few seasons of The Walking Dead TV show. So I think that that is something closer to what you might expect to be a good adaptation of One Piece. Think more Pirates of the Caribbean style than One Piece itself. And I think with that framing, the series is much more primed to succeed. It does not have to be One Piece, the manga that we know panel by panel, page by page, beat by beat. I think a series heavily inspired by One Piece's sort of tone or style, but without actually trying to recreate it in the real world, would be much more successful. And following the general narrative of One Piece while toning down certain more supernatural or fantastical elements, as well as, you know, the full spectrum of what certain abilities can do, perhaps a much more toned down, grounded version of the abilities and Devil Fruit users as well, as well as, for example, being able to chop up entire ships, throw buildings around, break islands, destroy islands, things like that. If you just take everything and neuter it 50, you know, 50 degrees down, then you still have that really great story of One Piece and the elements of the narrative that make it strong. Because once you get down to the essence of One Piece's storytelling, Nami's backstory in Arlong Park is going to be a tragic backstory no matter how it's spun. It doesn't need the supernatural elements to make it a tragic backstory. You could, for example, tell Robin's backstory in Ohara without having to make Saul a giant. There are many things that you can do to keep the essence of what One Piece's narrative is and what makes it so emotionally powerful while still cutting a lot of the harder to adapt less realistic aspects of it. Even just things like gags and the exaggerated character reactions that's going to be toned down and that's fine. It's going to be done in more of, you know, <laughs> I guess an American Netflix style, realistic, grounded basis of humor. But I think general trends, right? Like I don't think Sanji is going to have a nosebleed every time he sees a woman. 
but I think that it is very likely that Sanji is still going to keep a lot of his more womanizing tendencies that we saw early on in Baratier. So maybe more toned down gags and everything in general, but the stale, same beats and style of humor. This is of course all speculation on my part, but I literally cannot imagine them trying to adapt One Piece as One Piece is. So I'm looking more so to how TV adaptations have somewhat succeeded in the past when adapting fantasy works. And in general, the route has been to cut away a lot of the elements that are less realistic, keeping a lot of the same elements and themes and ideas and sort of the general feel of the story, but toning it down to feel like a more stylized world, but not an out of, you know, out of touch with reality sort of world, not something completely fantasy or unadaptable. So I think that's what I would expect for the style of adaptation that this would be. If they're legitimately trying to go you know, the full nine yards and try and adapt One Piece as One Piece is, I think that there's simply no way for that to succeed. So I would trust that they're going with the route that is more tested and proven. And finally, there's three reasons that I am at least trying to stay optimistic about this. So first of all, if you are a One Piece fan, you have to understand that this live action adaptation coming out, the ramifications it can have for One Piece's popularity worldwide in general, sort of the One Piece fan base in general, it can only either bring in new fans or not do anything at all, right? One Piece is not going to lose fans over a bad adaptation. Because if you're a One Piece fan and a bad adaptation comes out, that doesn't mean you're going to drop One Piece. The only thing that this adaptation has potential to do is bring in new fans. The reality is that even if it's really bad, it's probably just going to go under the radar and most people aren't really going to hear about it. It's not going to negatively skew the perception of One Piece for most people one way or another. It's just going to flop and kind of disappear. Now, if it is good, then there's a lot of potential there. We've seen this before with say Game of Thrones or even something like The Witcher, which wasn't even a great adaptation. It wasn't a great series in my opinion. It was somewhat enjoyable. That alone likely increased the popularity and interest in let's say The Witcher books. So the potential of the One Piece live action adaptation, it can only really help the series. I think it's not going to do much to tank the popularity of One Piece or change One Piece's perception worldwide because again, generally when things like this come out, let's say Dragon Ball Evolution, the Death Note series, stuff like that, when these things are bad, they kind of just tank, go under the radar. It doesn't skew any non-One Piece fans' perception of what the actual series itself is like. So the potential for the live act action adaptation, as far as I see it, it's only really good or neutral. To me, those are the two things, the two sort of effects it can have. The positive effect of if it's even remotely good, if it's even just like Witcher standard of like a decently enjoyable TV show, if not great, not necessarily that good, right? But just something that people can turn on and somewhat enjoy, then that has the potential at the very least of turning One Piece into a genuine household name across the globe in all countries. I promise you at the moment, One Piece is still not a household name in America, at least where I'm at. A lot of people know about it, but it's not quite there yet. Just increasing the One Piece fan base worldwide, I think is just inherently good. It builds more interest in the series. It's just nice to have a larger community, a more worldwide global community that's more interested in talking about this series. So I think that's potentially a really good thing. So even if you personally don't even like the live action adaptation, if some other people happen to like it who aren't One Piece fans, it now gives them a greater reason to be pulled in and actually try the manga, which is of course really, really good. Now, the second reason I'm cautiously optimistic about this is because the backing behind this live action adaptation of One Piece, it feels like it's got more purpose and more budget and more planning behind it, I think, than any of these other recent live action adaptation attempts. The reason I say this is because one, we've of course been hearing about it for a long time, et cetera, et cetera. But more importantly than that, I just don't think you can compare it to things like the live action adaptation of say Cowboy Bebop, of Death Note, of Gantz, things like that. Because One Piece is, as a piece of media and its value, it is probably bigger than all those other live action adaptations combined. So in general, when you're adapting something that's as big of a piece of media as One Piece and very well, having the awareness of what a Netflix adaptation in this day and age can mean, I think that generally there is going to be a lot more care and effort being put in behind the scenes into a project like this. I don't wanna to say too big to fail because that's obviously not a thing, but you just have to think in terms of, you know, production effort that's going to go into something based on the scale of what's behind it, right? I think that a simple comparison is why was the, you know, Harry Potter franchise actually done well compared to something like 
Aragon, like Percy Jackson. Much larger piece of media, there's going to be a lot more work and effort being done into doing that right, simply because there's a lot more money and popularity to be gained out of that. I think that's just basically a general trend. I think Dragon Ball Evolution does sort of break this idea because Dragon Ball Evolution, Dragon Ball, of course, just as big a piece of media as One Piece, maybe bigger in some ways, arguably probably bigger in some ways, and that obviously flopped as a live action adaptation, but I would say that that is at this point, like 13 years ago that that came out. Whereas One Piece, it's probably not gonna be out for, the, for like another two years. And so the idea that we have now of what Netflix adaptations and just in general TV show adaptations of certain large pieces of media, large franchises can be has totally shifted from that day and age. So I would compare One Piece more so to recent TV series. I would say, for example, just looking at Cowboy Bebop, even though I don't think that that trailer really captures you know what we've seen of cowboy bebop the snippets that they've released i don't think that that live action adaptation lives up to in any way the original i think it fails to capture the tone the mood i think the essence of that series particularly well you can at least tell that there is a significant amount of budget and effort going into it to replicate at least the style and aesthetic of that series i would expect cowboy bebop to have a small fraction of the budget of what One Piece will have, which is why I expect the One Piece adaptation to be working with a significantly higher amount of manpower than any other sort of anime to Netflix adaptation that we've ever seen before. So I don't think that you can use previous examples to kind of discredit, oh, it's a Netflix adaptation of an anime series. We know how that goes, because it's just not the same. I would also add that Oda has been working on it and he seems to have great trust in the people behind this adaptation. But I still, if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't think that that's a great reason to support it because obviously Oda is going to say that the live action adaptation has its full backing. Plus we know that Oda likes and supports the One Piece anime quite a bit. So that does give precedent to sort of show that Oda's standards for what constitutes a good adaptation of One Piece are kind of absurdly low, but you know, we just won't think about that. I still think that the live action could be a lot bigger and he has more of a hand in that possibly than the anime. And finally, the third reason that I'm optimistic, this is more so just an emotional based reason. I think that a lot of us are probably underselling or undervaluing or not really quite realizing just the simple joy you might feel of seeing One Piece, which is a series that most of us love and is very dear to us and many of us have kind of grown up with it, of seeing that just adapted in the real world, of just seeing the characters that you know we know and love, Luffy, Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, just acting and interacting in you know a live action setting on Netflix. I think just the, this is not a reason for why the adaptation will be good, but I think that there is reason to kind of like, like kind of paw out the ice from your cynical hearts and just be open-minded for the first episode, because I think no matter what, many of us are going to enjoy at least the first episode. Even if it doesn't nail it or knock it out of the park or we really dislike certain aspects of it, I think just getting to see the series in a live action format is going to have some degree of novelty, of charm, or something like that that's going to be very enjoyable for you if you're a One Piece fan at all. And I think that that's something that you're not gonna feel just yet because you're gonna be very skeptical and you know pessimistic about how good it's going to be overall, but I'm saying that regardless of how good it's going to be, I think that I'm very interested in just seeing the series that I know, that I love, that I've grown up with for so long in the format that I'm going to get to see it in. It's going to feel particularly surreal just being able to go onto Netflix, see One Piece live action episode one, and just being able to hit play and roll and watch, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour of a live action adaptation, like a live action walking, talking Luffy, walking, talking Zoro. I think that's gonna be really, really cool to see. So just for the novelty of it alone, I think that there is something to really be excited for if you're a One Piece fan. That doesn't mean that the full series is gonna be good, but I think that you are, no matter what, unless you have a heart made of stone, I think you're gonna enjoy just seeing it come to life for at least one episode more than you may believe. So that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, then definitely like, comment, and subscribe.